Okay, good to go. And everybody hits the got it button so we know we're being recorded. Thank you, Michael. Um, I'll call to order the OPEP meeting uh, for the town of Wethersfield. Today is Monday, February 7th. And uh, by looks of it, we have Finance Director Mike O'Neill, Deputy Mayor Tom Mazzarella, town, Interim Town Manager Bonnie Therian, uh, Human uh, Relations uh, Guru Czar, uh, Claudia Tatia, and Chris Kabatker, if I, Kakmer, sorry. And uh, I think we have everybody in for a uh, forum, so we're ready to begin. Um, if I look through, I think, Mike, you attached the minutes from last meeting in November. If everybody had a chance to take a look at those minutes, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. A second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, and then we've got Chris on. So for a report of investment management, um, without further ado, and you, have, you guys changed names, I gotta always remember it, Fiducient Advisors, give us a rundown on how we're looking. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, good afternoon, folks. Do you wanna, uh, uh, Mike O'Neill, do you wanna share the screen or I think I that's do that. what we've done in the past and we'll, We'll hit highlights here. As the mayor indicated, we wanted to update you on, on capital market conditions and goings on and obviously performance through the end of the calendar year. And then we did have a couple of ideas um, on, the, on the asset allocation portfolio construction level just to, for your consideration. And for those of you, and I think it might be everyone, if uh, I may think it might be everyone, you'll see a little here, a little bit more detail at the, at the town meeting when we go a little bit deeper into the backdrop, but nonetheless, we've got an idea or two for you just based on our latest uh, capital market expectations and, and where we think there may be opportunities um, over the course of the next uh, several quarters anyways. So with that, Mike, if we could jump ahead to the very next page, um, we'll just provide a little bit of context here broadly, kind of big picture stuff, if you will. And I think as everyone's well aware, um, the narrative has changed a little bit in the markets over the course of the last few months. And as we'll see in a minute, while performance for the calendar year was, was perfectly suitable and fine uh, you know, all the way through December, more recently over the last several weeks, as you've I'm sure read and, 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 and gotten familiar with, there's been uh, markets have been a bit more volatile uh, and a bit more challenged from a return perspective. And um, the, you know, the reasons for that are two or threefold. Uh, obviously, the geopolitical situation has heated up a good deal, uh, and that always concerns investors a bit. Um, moreover, we've continued to have the Fed, as we've talked about uh, over the last couple of meetings, kind of re-message their intentions, right? So they're starting to extract stimulus out of the system. Uh, both in the terms of some of the support they've lent to markets with some of their asset purchasing. And moreover now, as you all know, and you've seen it with interest rates, an expectation that they're going to be in, begin to pay interest rates, the short interest rates, which, which as you all know, they control. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, of course, the continuing challenges associated on the healthcare front. So that all mixes together. Um, and it, it makes the investing environment a, a little bit more tenuous. The, the response to that, uh, you know, the action to take, you know, all things equal, of course, and, and, and which this committee has always done is um, an awareness, right, an acute awareness of just the return expectations and the risk uh, appetite for the OPEB program and over, right, just remaining diversified through this, the thick and thin, and, and you've always done that as well and continue to do that. Um, and even with all that said, Right, and, and some of these challenges. If you jump ahead, Mike, to the next page, um, and, and I know there's a lot of detail on this page, but in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see expectations from economists for economic growth around the world. Um, and if you can make it out there, you'll see coming off a pretty solid 2021 to the far right in the exhibit that Mike's highlighting, you'll see the expectations are still pretty darn solid for just core economic growth around the world in the coming couple of years. So if you, if you marry that to 
uh, a, a still on balance, decent earnings environment for corporations, not a perfect unblemished one, as you saw last week with, with uh, uh, the meta folks, the Facebook folks, a solid one nonetheless. We do still think that you know, we can have some constructive outcomes in the capital markets in the coming quarters and, and years for sure. So um, kind of this mixed message though, right? That on the surface, there's some pressures that have arisen um, but the larger backdrop fundamentally we think is still decent. Um, and, and we'll kind of talk to some of that momentarily when we work through the portfolio detail. So that is, that is a, a biggest picture in terms of what's going on in, in, in markets really through the end of last year and into the new year. Um, if you jump, Michael, uh, to the next page, just and then I'll pause and see if there's any questions from the committee. But just to level set, you know, broadly in terms of returns and what happened last year, uh, this grid, you'll remember the way it works is you'll see that we've in kind of encircled the fourth quarter return. And then we provide, in this case, what is essentially the, the return for 2021 year to date number. Uh, you do see that the, the left-hand side of the exhibit has fixed income returns. Um, and we have been challenged, as you know, in the fixed income arena with higher interest rates. And that occurred through the entirety of 2021. And Mike's just highlighted there the third column over the broad fixed income markets. And you see they were actually down last year. So we're going to look at some pretty decent returns uh, in a minute for the portfolio, but it was not so much from the fixed income arena. And we'll talk about some ways to maybe tackle that on a go forward basis, because we do continue to think that interest rates here will remain volatile and, and, and maybe trending higher, all things equal. Uh, in the middle of the exhibit, you'll see equity markets uh, for both the quarter and the year. And, and kind of the story that really took hold toward the end of the year is this rotation back to US large cap equities. And you see that pretty dramatically in terms of the fourth quarter with those stocks up almost 10% in Q4. And that obviously drove very performance for the full year. Um, even with some of those challenges as we came into year end and some of those pauses, you do see a full 26% return for US large caps. The small cap stocks up 15% here in the US. <laughs> Uh, and, and a lot of the international market generating decent returns, as you see, they're up 11% with the noted exception for emerging markets. Uh, and emerging markets in some ways have become beholden to what's going on in China. As you all have read and know, the authorities there have become much more pronounced and rigid with some of their regulations and tried to dampening you know, some of act the activities in capital markets. And there's been a bit of a contagion effect into other areas of the emerging markets, which as you may all remember from a constituent standpoint is dominated by, Asia, by, by, by Asian uh, uh, countries, you know, China being most prominent, but Korea and, and other uh, kind of uh, Pacific base and Pacific rim uh, uh, countries being big components of that market too. So some headwind challenges there, although Year to date in this year, while we don't have the numbers on the page, emerging markets have actually been the best performers. Uh, and then uh, uh, in terms of the diversifying asset classes, things like REITs and commodities with the inflation pressures you've read about being a little more pronounced and persistent had pre pretty solid years in, in reaction to that, you see to the far right. Um, so that is the backdrop, just big picture. There's a lot more data included in your slide deck if you're if you're inclined to look at it, but I think we hit the highlights. Um, before we transition over to the portfolio, we'll look at it quickly. Any questions from the committee on on just the the, the, the broader landscape and what's going on with markets or, or, or on the economic front? No, nope. I'm good. Great. Uh, so let's so let's forge ahead here. Mike, we'll uh, jump into the portfolio details. You skip ahead of several pages there. There, That one right there, perfect. So at the end of the uh, calendar year, again, this is a testament to the great work that the town's done through time. Thirty Over $31 million of invested assets in the OPEG trust, which is, uh, remind the committee, right, which do certainly on the front end uh, in terms of size and, and, and addressing those obligations in a really meaningful manner. 
Um, many of your peers have, have, have not had that foresight and are, are trying to play catch up. So uh, great work all around. Um, no particular issues um, across the portfolio. Uh, the only thing from a roster standpoint that I'll uh, point to the committee's attention, it's not something we have to act on, but I want to be mindful of it. The Vanguard Inflation Protected Securities uh, uh, portfolio there you see right near the top of the zip. Uh, we did have the portfolio manager at Vanguard retire at the end of the calendar year. Um, so we did elevate that strategy to what our research team calls discuss, which means there's just been a situation and a circumstance for us to be mindful of, but doesn't elevate to a full on watch. Vanguard does a great job managing these retirements and transitions, and they back staff and train people in advance of these changes. And we're pretty certain that'll be the case again here. So we'll keep you posted on that. Again, nothing to act on, but just wanted to mention that for the record, the, uh, the roster uh, uh, beyond that is in good working order from a research perspective and, and no particular issues or challenges. Um, so I want to, I thought what we would do here is a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but if you go, Mike, to the next page, we did want to just walk through uh, some thoughts here, and you do see some potential money moving around. There's no uh, great changes to the larger allocations, but uh, we do want to do a couple of things here. Um, you'll remember that we use the strategic income strategy in the pension plan now. That strategy, as you remember, is what we call unconstrained or dynamic bond investing. And what that means, if you remember, is it gives BlackRock the wherewithal um, to invest in fixed income securities, which is a much broader tool set than a traditional fixed income manager would have. And, and really what that means, right, is they've got much more arsenal uh, in their corner to, to um, invest in unsettled interest rate environments. Uh, so this is a, a team that we've known and used for a long time. Again, it's already an existing manager in the town pension plan. We thought it made sense given our reading of the tea leaves within the fixed income arena for rate volatility to introduce a measure of BlackRock into the program here. So you see there if it suits the, the, the committee's um, uh, 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 you know, preferences, uh, uh, trimming a little bit of two of your existing anchor managers uh, and putting some of that money with, with BlackRock just to provide some of that defensive protection over the next few quarters at least. And then on the, on the um, larger front there, you'll see across uh, the global equity categories, both domestic and international, one thing you'll remember we remind the committee of is just being aware of uh, the, uh, the construction of the opportunity set. And what I mean by that is, you know, how much on a capitalization weighted basis is in domestic versus international equities. Um, and that mix is always kind of uh, evolving, as you know, kind of based on conditions in the, in the marketplace. Um, so you see there, we've been running at about two thirds uh, domestic versus international. If you look, Mike, right in the middle of the page there at the existing targets, you've got 40% by target in US and 20% in international. When in fact today, uh, domestic markets are only about 58% uh, uh, of the global opportunity set. Uh, so they're not really at this more pronounced level that we have in the OPEB trust program. So our school of thought for us would be on the margin there to retrim that positioning a little bit uh, and get the portfolio realigned with, with, with really the structure of the underlying equity markets themselves. No major changes uh, beyond that. And, and you see there are no contemplated changes to the roster managers. It's just remixing them on the margin a little bit. There's a little bit of a trim there you see in the real asset program just to accommodate some of those evolving weights. But um, this is kind of recommended trades uh, uh, for the committee's consideration. <laughs> again, answer questions on that. But the intent again is just to bring the portfolio fully in line with our very latest <laughs> thinking uh, based on all the work we did at the end of last year into early this year around opportunities and, and circumstances in the market. So. Let me pause on that for a minute and, and, and see if there's a reaction from the committee, concerns, questions, 
thoughts just around these couple of ideas that we've presented to you. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. Uh, when was the last time that the Fed started to allow rates to creep a little bit? Was it early 20? Yeah, uh, in a less pronounced way, Mike. And I, I think I can, um, let me see if I can read into your question because I'm, I, the question might be um, what asset classes maybe do better and what happens to asset classes when rates are rising? No, uh, I'm, I was going to ask specifically about BlackRock and just- okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Just, just a little bit of context for what you're proposing. And I, I, I think I'm not asking this to necessarily question it, obviously, but I'm just wondering if you could offer some commentary on how that holding performed um, in the pension plan. I think we had it, yeah. didn't we? Back yeah, then? we do. And, 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 and what, I mean, there was, there was a, you know, there was a period where the interest rates, there was a little bit of change, not, not even volatility, right? But I'm just curious about during that period back in late 19, early 20, what did, uh, what did that performance look like for that fund? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting, right? The, the, I guess I would answer, Mike, in two ways. One is the broad profile historically for the BlackRock strategy. Um, it'll struggle if interest rates are going down dramatically. Right when you see kind of a sell-off and a flight to quality, based on their positioning, they tend to not hold up as well as traditional fixed income. You do have areas and exposures that will hold up better, right, in the form of the other three existing managers that you have in the program. BlackRock does really well when rates are either bouncing along sideways or moving higher. Your intuition, Mike, spot on. I the numbers, but we'll see them in the in the the pension the town meeting. BlackRock had a phenomenal, uh, you know, last fifteen yeah. months or so in an environment where rates have moved higher. They're the best performer in your fixed income program by a long shot uh, on the pension side, uh, and that's our kind of consistent with our expectation. If rates move sideways or inclined to move higher, like we think they will, um, their historic track record has been very very strong and consistent. Um, so that's kind of the motivation there for uh, adding a measure of, 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 of their exposure into the program here, which we don't currently have. Um, and we've got, you know, we use elsewhere in some of the other retirement plans for the town. So that is, that's, that's again, the motivation there. Um, and then we talked a little bit about equity. I guess, you know, the bigger question is, you know, just the, you know, how do things do in an environment where the Fed regime changes? And it's interesting, right? If you go back and look through time, it's not as troublesome as you first think, but to the point of, of what does happen, fixed income tends to struggle, right? And we've seen that already in advance of some of this, this rate campaign taking hold. Um, moreover, we think that's going to continue and, and, and serve as motivation for the, the recommendation for BlackRock. But equity, surprisingly enough, if the fundamental backdrop is remain solid, which we think it will, equities actually do pretty well in an environment where rates move higher and, and there's even a press of inflation, for example. Uh, they tend to perform a, a, a pretty admirably, so we don't have as acute concerns there. Um, but again, right, we talked about just the structure of global equities and the desire to tighten up and make it look a little bit more, the portfolio look a little bit more like what that, that uh, opportunity set looks like. I don't know, Mike, if that answered everything or not. I'm happy to go yeah, on. that's helpful. Thank you. Like, uh, so, um, so that would be, uh, uh, let's maybe, well, we can let that just season for a, a minute or two and, and come back to it at, at, at um, at, at the mayor's uh, um, uh, interest, maybe just to have a little bit of color and perspective, Mike, we can skip ahead and just show the committee the performance. So you've got that kind of uh, mentally cataloged as well. So here you see for uh, down in the bottom half of the page there, you'll see if you can make it out for the fourth quarter, the trust was up about four and a half percent. So it was a touch ahead of the invested benchmark, which you see expressed in the upper right hand corner of the page. Uh, and then you do see for 2021, another good solid year, right? Up close to 13% for the OPEB assets um, and a net of fees a, a bit ahead of the benchmark as well. So, 
and and the longer term results, right, continue to kind of lean uh, 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 into that incremental return. Remember, right here, we always talk about it, the five, the, not so much the five, I guess, the seven, and, and since inception numbers, right, the portfolio started out predominantly exclusively indexing, right? So you, you see some of that effect kind of baked into the longer numbers, but near term, uh, a little bit of a ramp up in terms of the incremental return, which is always uh, encouraging. So um, the good performance and the managers continue, I think, to do good work um, on, the, on, the, on the trust behalf. So um, I guess really, I want to be sensitive to time and your full agenda, of course. It, it really, the only thing we had for the committee to contemplate was some of the uh, in the existing weightings and, and adding the BlackRock strategy, uh, if you think it, uh, if if you think uh, you you agree with the recommendation and and as we described it, this, the circumstances warrant the changes. And Chris, this this keeps us within policy. Yeah, yeah, because there's not really, Mike. There's not any wholesale changes in target weights or anything across the larger allocation uh, class, asset classes, right? So it's really a, a dismiss is there but still well within policy yeah i think this i think this makes sense i think it'll be wise okay shall we uh i, I think it would it would be worthwhile although it's not required for the uh, committee to um approve this i think it's always a good thing to show that in the in the minutes i think that uh showing a fiduciary oversight and, and so forth. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that up to you, Mr. Mayor. No, it's, I'll, make a, I'll make a motion uh, to follow what Chris has recommended. I'll second it. Thank you, Bonnie. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it, motion carries. Thank you, Chris. All right, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I didn't have anything else for the committee this afternoon. Okay. I don't know what you got in your magic uh, crystal ball, but uh, how are we looking? January wasn't a good month. We yeah, most, it's, it's tough to handicap with absolute precision, but if you look at the indices, right, January, a lot of balanced portfolios were down, you know, somewhere between three and 4%. Uh, we've since had some recovery in the month of February. Um, uh, as things kind of stabilized a bit. So yeah, we've gotten off to a little wind in terms of the calendar year, but it seems like things are settling down on the margin. So hopefully we'll be back, um, you know, on the right side of things here in the not too distant future. Okay, yeah, I'm just looking Dow's down, just a skosh, NASDAQ, S&P are about the same, so. Okay. Anybody with any questions for Chris or Mike on the OPEB? No. No, look good. Okay. Uh, any other business before us, Mike? No other business. Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. We're adjourned. And what's our next one? We got uh, volunteer firefighters coming up. Yes. yes. Okay. I'll jump over to that one. So we'll jump out and jump back into that one. Very See you guys shortly. Thanks, folks. Peace. Thanks, Chris.